to New Life Christian Fellowship Church in Gaston, Oregon. Now let's join the congregation with today's message. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, your anointing is so powerful here this morning. We just sense you're aware that you're very much aware of our gathering here. And you have sanctioned this with the mighty Holy Spirit coming into this place and is going to speak to us in a special way. I pray that our, we'll leave behind any of the, the distractions. Lord, if we're watching at home, help us, Lord, to put aside the distractions and pay attention to what is being said and what the Holy Spirit might bring to our hearts and minds as we worship together. Thank you, Lord. We lift up these that are sick and that are going through crisis. And Lord God, and, and Lord, show his family. And Lord God, and just different ones, Lord, that are having to go through things. You said you never, ever, 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 ever leave us nor forsake us. I believe that, I walk in that, and I trust you, because you've never lied to me, never, ever. Now I ask your blessing in a mighty way, in Jesus' name, Lord, may our words be yours, your words ours, as we express our gratitude and our love to you, and we give you praise, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Turn with me, please, to... Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to read uh, several verses, and then we'll see what, what happens after that. Philippians 4, 13. Uh, <clears throat> here it is. I, yeah, I know, no, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I like this in, in this version. I can do anything that he wants me to do because he infuses into me the energy that I need to accomplish it. Philippians 4.13. I live by that. No task, no task on this journey that he's had me on is too big, too insignificant that he doesn't help me with it. It may look big to me. Some of the changes that he wants in your life, you may think it could never happen or it's too big for you. If you're watching at home and you say, well, you, you don't know my habit pattern. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know who I am. You don't know where I'm coming from. I don't have to know who you are. I don't have to know where you're coming from. But I do know the word of God, and I believe it, and I stand upon it. You can't do anything and everything he that tells you to do because he's going to give you the strength. Oh, praise God. How about the third chapter of Philippians? Let's look at that real quick. We talked about that last week. And we made me there a little bit this week again. Philippians 3, beginning at verse 10, says, And be found in him, no, verse 10, that I may know him and, and, not just know him, and know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. And, and, and. I've made it a lifelong dream, practice to know him. Not about him. That's simple. As I said last week, you can go to any Bible bookstore or you can go online and find books after books after books after books about him. Some people have even written books about having gone to heaven. I've never been there. I don't know where it is or where. I just know it must be up there somewhere. I just know this. When I leave this planet, I will be united with him forever. So I don't have to worry about it. 
But I do want to know him. I want to understand him. I want to be like him. I want to understand resurrection power. I want to understand, I want to understand what it's like to walk through the valley. I want to, I want, so what has he done? He's taken me on a journey. I'm on a journey right now. I'll be on a journey till the day I leave this planet. It never ends. He's got me on a journey. Go to Psalms. We're really jumping around today. Psalms 37. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 37, uh, verse 1 through 9. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. You know one of the hardest things to do as a believer? When you see the person living next door to you that lives like you would say, like the devil. You ever seen that? That doesn't mean all neighbors are like that. Thank God for that. But the person living next to you, their lifestyle is such that you wonder how in the world God could ever love them. Hello. When you see them being blessed, it's hard not to envious. Be envious. Thank you for some nods. That means you agree. Or you're just trying to stay awake. <laughs> Verse 2. They shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You know what one of my desires for this church is? Have more than one worship team. Yeah. So one week we may have this group or next week have another group. Praise God. Maybe this group doesn't sing like you want them to sing, so we found another group that they may sing like you like them. Hallelujah. Or, or maybe this too, you know, you just... Uh, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy when I go to uh, Lafayette, back to Whitehorse, the variety. I've seen Pastor Jeff just kind of walk around and pick up a kid over here that's just over there fidgeting on it and lead him right up to the platform. And then they get up there and they start dancing and singing. Yeah. And you think, where did he get that kid? He'll walk around. First thing you know, he's got about six or eight little kids up on the platform singing. Hallelujah. 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 You know, that's what I love. That's what I get excited about. And I'm desire of my heart is one day to have more than one worship team here so that the worship team here can sit down and be blessed. I just threw that one out there. You didn't know about that, but I didn't give it to you anyway. Are you walking home and you want to sing? Get on over here and help us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Now, I want to, I want to insert something right here. The bring it to pass time frame confuses us. You say, well, I delight myself in the Lord. I was in church, praise God, and I, I came up and I gave him the offering and, and I shook everybody's hand and I smiled the whole time I was there. Now then, Lord, what are you going to give me? That's the way society works. And he said he will do it, but the time frame. Hello. He doesn't give you a time frame. He said, all your days are numbered. Oh, yeah? What are they, Lord? He ain't going to tell you. None of your business. Because if he told you, you'd mess up anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> or you'd wait till the last minute. How many are good procrastinators besides Tracy? 
Sure we are. You know, come on. You didn't know I knew you did. I know her. Oh, I love it. I have so much fun. You know, pastoring is, is a blast. You know, because I, I didn't used to enjoy it. On this journey he took me on, man, he put me some places that I would, I'd be afraid to say anything like that. But I ain't afraid around here. Hallelujah. I haven't been afraid for a long time. He should bring it to pass. And, and shall bring forth the, thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, verse 7. And in, wait patiently for him. Wait patiently for him. Wait patiently for him. Wait patiently for him. How long is patient? Wait patiently for him. But Lord, I've been waiting about 10 years. Wait patiently for him. I'm going to read you some scripture in a minute where a lady waited a long time to have a son. Wait patiently. They that wait upon the Lord. Wait. Wait. But Lord, you don't, I'm not a good waiter. He said, I know that. That's why I'm being patient with you. <laughs> yeah. But Lord, if you just hurry up, I would be more on fire. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> You'd fizzle out quicker. Ooh, am I having fun today? Thank you, Jesus. Wait patiently for him. Fret not because of him who prospers in your way, in the way, in your way, by your way, on your street. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. I read it. I just added the street part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Fret not because of the man who bringeth evil Wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Oh, my. You mean I can't get angry? Yeah, you can get it. Bible said you can get angry and sin not. So wherever that line is, I'm not sure. Because most time I cross over it. If I get angry, I'm, I'm mad. Hello. And sometimes I say things that are not the best things to listen to. But now I know you're all righteous, and I'm so glad you're all righteous. Thank you, God. <laughs> Verse 9, evildoers will be cut off, but those that wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. Whew. Boy, Lord, I don't know what you're saying there, but it's a whole bunch of stuff that we better listen to. Now we've got to go over to the Old Testament. we go to 1 Samuel. First chapter in Samuel, beginning at verse 2. And uh, First Samuel what? First Samuel chapter 1, verse 2. First Samuel. Here we go. And this guy is, is talking about here as the beginning is had two wives. Okay? Verse 2. He had two wives. And the name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peniel. Now, one of the wives, Peniel, had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up, verse 3, out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord. And as he went up there, the one wife with all her sons... Now, you got to get this picture here. Here's a wife over here. She's got a whole flock of kids. That would drive you insane right there. <laughs> Two girls in my house is bad enough. <laughs> but I'm learning. I'm on a learning curve. I thought I had it together, but I didn't have it together. So he's got me on another journey. Can you believe that on this journey, he said, there's some stuff that you haven't learned yet, so I'm going to rescue a gal from a little backwoodsy village 
and bring her to Barrow, all the way, from, not to Barrow, but all the way to Glen Allen. Not to, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take her all the way to Gaston, <laughs> another little dinky place. <laughs> it's a journey. I want you to learn some stuff. I'm not finished with you. You said you wanted to know me. I'm going to teach you. You know, the first thing, when you ask the Lord on this journey, you better have a teachable spirit. Because yep. he's going to squeeze it. Yeah. He's going to take your spirit and he's going to squeeze that and twist it a little bit. Man, oh man, you think you know how to learn some stuff? You ain't even begun to know yet. Hallelujah. But then when he gets all through, he just kind of smooths us over and says, it's okay. It's okay. I know you failed. Hello. But, but it's okay. I'm patient. I'm patient. Okay. Whew. Oh, glory. Man, Lord, help me. And uh, anyway, to cut all through this, it said... Uh, uh, <clears throat> In fact, I, it looks to me like she must have had a whole bunch of sons. Uh, ten sons at least. And I don't know the time frame. So it had to be, if it was one a year, that would be ten years at least. That she's been without a son, wanting one. And so finally, she's at, they come up to the worship time. And she sits over in the corner, very bitter, and, and, and is very uh, crying, carrying on, and uh, the high priest says to her, what's wrong with you? And I'll, I'll break it down for you. She said, I don't have a son. And that lady over there, I live with her, and she's got ten of them. And she made a vow. She said, God, Give me a son, and I'll give him to you. The priest prayed over her and said, go home, because you're going to have a, a son. Now, was, was God waiting for the vow? No, God had her on a journey. Hello. God had her on a journey. And, and so the time came that... She conceived and had a son, and his name was Samuel. What a, what a great judge he was. And she brought him to Eli and said, here's my son. He's all yours. I told God that he could, you could have him. So there he is. On December the 6th, 1937, and a little old shack, several hundred, several miles from a town called Weetumpk, Oklahoma, I entered this planet. And I asked my mother, did you dedicate me? You know how we, like we did the little one here and these different ones? She said, I gave you to the Lord. So here, here's the picture when she says that I, in my mind. She's got me, and she's holding me, and she says, Lord, this is your son. He's yours. You gave him to me, I give him to you. It wasn't until I was 10 years old that I realized, and then I didn't know it, but I'll look back and know it, but that's where my journey began. But I can still remember the scene as it will happen yesterday. I was sitting on the front row of a church in Lancaster, California. I was sitting there. I had a pair of white britches on and a white shirt 
And I remember these britches had the button missing on the top. Now, at 10 years old, you're embarrassed when a button's missing. Hello? And the preacher preached that Sunday night, and I saw the corner of my eye, my father, walk down the aisle. And kneel at the altar. Now, my father had known God, but he got way drifted off. He almost died. And he told God, if you let me let my mother prayed for him and my grandmother prayed for him. And he said, he made a vow, you heal me and I'll live for you. But he went several years away. I was 10, and I saw him coming. And I wanted to get up and go pray with him. But I had a button missing on my britches. And I was too embarrassed to get up. I was going to get baptized that night. That's why he came. My mother said to him, we live about 15 miles from town. Aren't you going to go to church tonight? Dwayne's getting baptized. That was the night that my journey begun. I didn't know it. I had no idea what I was in for. But all, as I mentioned to you before, all my life then, from then on, all I ever talked about was being a preacher. No knowledge of it. But I was on a journey. And my father knew Hello. Now, my goal was to be like my dad, because I loved my father. I admired him. I thought, dad's a farmer, I'll be a farmer. Dad's a truck driver, I'll be a truck driver. I just thought that was the greatest thing. But I'm on a journey. My father's in control, my heavenly father, and I don't even know it. 17 years old, I'm in the Air Force. Going to make that a career. Boy, that's a good deal. Uh, uh, this, is all, this is okay. Uh -huh. In that state, I met a guy by the name of Don Nelson. I'm on a journey. He's fixing my life now. He's bringing me around. And I said to this guy, in Fairbanks, the last guy said, boy, they must not need missionaries up here. And he laughed at me. He put me in his airplane, and he took me on a journey. A few years later, I returned to a village on Beaver, called Beaver. I was a missionary. And that journey led me to Barrow, Alaska eventually. Now, during all this time, I could go into a lot of details of what I want. But this time, I'm there for 13 years. And one of the greatest things in my life happened to me right there. A school teacher walked in the church. And I fell in love with her. I'm on a journey. Hello. God's preparing me. Now, you know here the neat thing about all this? If you're watching at home or listening to me here, you know what the neat thing about this? On... February 2560, she came into this planet in Hood River, Oregon. Little did she know that she was going to marry a preacher one day. Because she didn't like me. Yeah. You're on a journey, too. Hmm. Little do it's you know, little do you know. I got to quit. <laughs> it's getting time. You're probably getting hungry. This journey has taken me, I'm telling you what, I don't know everything, and I'm still on a journey. I know what it's like to hurt. I know what it's like to cry. I know what it's like to, to have a business. I, I can go on and on and on and on. I know what it is to, to build a school and I just on and on. 
but it's all a part of a plan. And you know what? That I might know him. I cannot, I could not, and I would not know him like I know him today had I not been on this journey. I wouldn't have to come. I couldn't share the confidence that I share with Susie on a regular basis. When this whole project of this school took on, it was way over her head. But you know what I could say to her? I understand, because I've done more than one thing that's been way over my head. But I know I can do, and you can do, all things for Christ. Hello. And you know why? I was given to the Lord. And I'm inviting you, if you're watching, give yourself to the Lord. If, you, if, you, if, if you're sitting at home and you wonder, how, how's this going to work? Just give yourself to the Lord. Now, has it been difficult? Yeah. But it's been the most exciting thing that could ever happen to this human being on this planet than have been given to the Lord and to go on this journey. I love it. I love it. And you know what? So wonderful. And I'm going to try to wrap this up. Is to have you as a body of believers and those of you that are watching that I can share this journey with and that I can have someone walk with me through this journey. We're having a great time. Hello. And he just keeps adding to the family. Hallelujah. And you know what? Well, what about the people that, 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 that they're no longer on the journey with you? That's between them and Jesus. You know that? And I'm not going to dwell on those that have dropped by the wayside. I'm going to dwell on those that are still on the journey. Amen. And that's you. That's you. That's me. We're still on that journey. Hallelujah. And we can do anything and everything. Hallelujah. Because we want to know him. You know, I get to reading sometimes. I, I, I got to quit. What time is it? Oh, my goodness. I got to quit. The oxygen running out? You okay? Good. I, I, that, that's my gauge over there. You know, little did Hannah know when God gave her Samuel, what a man God was going to raise up. He wrote two books of the Bible. And no doubt other stuff. Little did she know. And you know what? Little do you know where it's going to end up. That's not over with now. We're just on a journey. Hallelujah. We're having a blast. And there's more yet to come. So I challenge you. Let the Holy Spirit direct you on this great and wonderful trip that we're on. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. There's so much, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit would help us to love you even as we sing about it today. And that, Lord, we'll just say you love us so much, Lord. If you have our hair, every hair on our head numbered, then you're certainly you're concerned about us. I can sing of your love forever. You're awesome, and I thank you for it. Bless your people. Bless your people. In Jesus' name.